I have a question for you. When you're not at home or at work, where are you most likely to be? When you ask yourself that question, is there a place that automatically pops into your mind? Or are you someone like me who goes, uh, I don't know, maybe the grocery store? Now, the thing is, if you had asked me that exact same question when I was a lot younger, if you had asked me where I spend the most time outside of home and school, I would have told you about, well, actually, let me show you. One hour later. I would have told you about this park where I spent pretty much every afternoon hanging out with all the kids in the neighborhood. I definitely got into my fair share of questionably legal mischief here, but we won't get into that in this video. Let's just say I had the best time ever. Or maybe I would have told you about this mall where I spent so many hours flipping through CDs and HMV and loitering in West 49. Both of those stores are long gone now and there isn't really much going on here nowadays. Or maybe it was the coffee shop that used to be right here. It was called Williams and it was the place to be for teens and tweens pretty much every school night. They had these amazing Belgian waffles that were covered in ice cream and Nutella and berries. And well, they're long gone and apparently it is now a Middle Eastern restaurant. Or when I was in my early 20s, I probably would have told you about the bar that used to be right here. It was kind of a shithole, but they had open mic on Tuesday nights and karaoke on Sundays. And it was somewhere that you could hang out for a number of hours and be entertained without spending too much money. I don't live around here anymore, so I was just completely shocked to right now learn that it is now becoming a daycare. Um, I sure hope they changed out the carpets. I also feel like outside of a daycare is probably the sketchiest place I could possibly be filming, so we're gonna get out of here. Is it just me, or is this whole bit starting to feel a little bit like a Nickelback video? This is where I grew up. But today, the place that I spend the most time in other than home and work is probably the grocery store, which is actually incredibly depressing to think about. And perhaps the most depressing part of all is that this is not at all unique to just me. Now this is all because of something that I'm calling the death of the third place. And the third place is not something that I invented. In fact, it is a long-standing sociological concept that basically says that home is your first place, work or school is your second place, and your third place is wherever else you spend the most time, specifically for the purpose of socializing. Third places are meant to be community hubs, places where people of all socioeconomic backgrounds could gather and meet and hang out. Think about like Monk's Cafe in Seinfeld, or Moe's Tavern in The Simpsons, or Central Perk and Friends. Not gonna lie, I had to Google that last one. I've never actually watched Friends. Cue the millennial outrage, sorry. Third places can be coffee shops, bars, parks, malls, clubs, libraries, basically anywhere meant to encourage public relaxation. Does anyone else think that public relaxation sounds like a perfect name for like an underground rub and tug parlor? Oh, I can't say that in a video, can I? And well, it's been thoroughly studied and well documented that the number of third places has been steadily declining for the last number of decades, and it's a problem. But before we get into that, let's talk about why it's happening. One of the main reasons is poor urban planning. As cities have become more and more car-centric and less walkable over the years, amenities have become less accessible, and it's a lot less common now to see people just walking around their neighborhoods and randomly patronizing small businesses. Urban sprawl and restrictive zoning laws are also largely responsible for the lack of affordable housing, which has caused a lot of people to have to live further from where they work. It's now very common to have a 30 to 60 minute commute in either direction. And understandably, when you have almost an hour's drive home and you still have to make dinner, take care of your kids or your pets, take out the trash, clean your house, shower, and pack your lunch for the next day, going out to socialize after work becomes really impractical other than maybe on a Friday. Of course, we also can't ignore the economic situation as a whole. As the cost of housing and groceries and gas and basically everything else has continued to go up, more and more people are finding themselves with no disposable income left after they pay their bills, which means that going out for happy hour isn't really even an option, especially when a single appetizer and cocktail can run you upwards of about $50 after tax and tip nowadays. But even that is just scratching the surface. Online shopping and technology as a whole has also played a large part in this. I did a deep dive on this in a video a few weeks ago, but as more and more people turn to Amazon over going to stores and DoorDash over going to restaurants and Netflix over going to the movie theater, it's become easier than ever to just never leave your house and harder than ever for third places to even stay open. And of all of the businesses that managed to somehow circumvent all of this and remain profitable and stay open, a whole bunch of them got wiped out by the pandemic closures a few years ago. 
Many malls across North America have become desolate. Small local businesses have been devoured by their multinational competitors, and we're now living in a world where there's a Starbucks and a Walmart on almost every block, but basically nothing else. I'd like to get my ear pierced. Well, better make it quick, kiddo. In five minutes, this place is becoming a Starbucks. And on a totally unrelated note, we're now facing an epidemic of loneliness. Surely that can't have anything to do with the fact that we spend 95% of our time either at home or at work, and that's not even accounting for the people who work from home and therefore don't even have a second place, let alone a third. It's strange to think about, because we are more connected to each other now than we ever have been at any point in history, yet we've never been more isolated or lonely. And unsurprisingly, that loneliness is leading to skyrocketing levels of depression and anxiety. I know personally that I've dealt with anxiety for most of my life. I've always been a ruminator and an overthinker, and the more time that I spend alone, the worse that tends to be. Over the years, I've found many different ways to cope with that, and one of the most important things that I have found, one of the biggest pieces of that puzzle, has been talking to somebody. So if you are experiencing depression or anxiety or really any other mental health struggles, I'd encourage you to give therapy a try with today's sponsor, BetterHelp. My favorite thing about BetterHelp is that because it's fully online, not only is it a lot more affordable than traditional therapy, but it's also a lot more convenient. You can do your sessions basically whenever you want in whatever way works for you. You can either talk to your therapist on the phone or over messenger or video call. Getting started is also super simple. All you have to do is go online and fill out a quick questionnaire and then BetterHelp will custom match you with one of their licensed therapists who specializes in whatever it is that you need help with, often in as little as 48 hours. So to get started, head over to betterhelp.com slash according to Nicole, or click the link in the description box down below. Doing so not only gets you a special discount on your first month, but also is the first step towards you taking control of your mental health. Thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. It seems like most major cities are now just shocking exhibits of income disparity, where everybody who can actually afford to live there is very wealthy and everyone else is basically in poverty. Like there are $4,000 a month studio apartments, and homeless encampments, but nothing in between. See Toronto, Vancouver, Los Angeles, New York City, Portland, everywhere. With rent prices so absurdly high, it's no wonder that small businesses can't afford to operate. And that's not even touching on all the red tape and bureaucratic bullshit that municipalities force small business owners to jump through just in order to be able to even open a business in the first place, which makes it completely cost prohibitive unless you have the funding of a multinational corporation behind you. One of the ways that this culture shift away from third places has been the most noticeable, at least to me, is with kids. As a kid in the 90s and early 2000s, I spent pretty much every evening outside with my friends. From the time I got home from school until the streetlights came on, you'd find us all outside riding bikes and skateboards and scooters and playing soccer and basketball and road hockey. We had these deadly homemade skateboard ramps. We had water guns, we had sidewalk chalk. But what we didn't have were video games, or social media, or iPads. In truth, even if these things had existed back then, the majority of us would not have had them because the idea of our parents spending a week's salary on a toy was just not gonna happen. Most of us just didn't grow up with that kind of money, at least not in my neighborhood. And in the pre-social media days, being broke was something you kind of just humbly accepted and learned to work around because there wasn't that same level of pressure for everybody to keep up with all the other faux rich parents who were on social media flexing that they just spent $2,000 on a Christmas gift for their kids. That just really wasn't a thing. So our social time was face to face on sidewalks and swing sets and these big green electrical boxes that we probably shouldn't have been sitting on. All of the kids on the street knew each other and we were mostly all friends because we had to be. It was just the bunch of us, so we had to learn to get along. But now it seems like kids hang out with their friends predominantly virtually when they're not at school. They play Fortnite or Minecraft or whatever other video games, honestly, I have no clue. And I know that they're talking to their friends through these headsets, but they're actually just sitting in their rooms alone at home. Now it's very normal to not know your neighbors. And I myself am guilty of this too. I've been living next to my neighbors for the last two years. I've been saying hi to them virtually every single day. They're super nice people, but I don't know their names. And now I'm in that weird predicament where it's like, I would like to know their names, but after two years, it would be very awkward and rude to acknowledge the fact that I don't know their names. And so I don't know how to bring it up. So I just don't. My point is that most of us are completely addicted to our phones and our social time with friends has been replaced by just sending each other memes back and forth over social media. And it sucks. 
Third places have become so few and far between nowadays that even when I make plans with somebody, I struggle to come up with something for us to do. It's like, wanna go wander aimlessly through a sad empty mall for a few hours? No, me neither. Wanna go out and spend like two hours of wages on the worst meal you've ever had at a shitty chain restaurant? No, me neither. What other options do we have? There's nothing to do. Maybe this is a hot take, but personally, I tend to also believe that the increased popularization and normalization of drug use is also correlated to the disappearance of third places. Obviously, I'm not like a scientist or whatever, so don't quote me on that, but I think it makes sense. Batman's a scientist. With nowhere to go and nothing to do, you might as well get high, right? I remember watching a video a couple years ago with Mac Miller, and he was talking about how when he would be sitting in a room alone working on his music, time would fly by so much faster when he would use. It started by me just sitting inside all day, and then it's like, then you get bored. Then you're like, well, I could just be high, and I could have a whole adventure in this room. And well, we all know how unfortunately that ended, and of course, he's far from the only one. Something that I've noticed for a long time now, and something that has bothered me for a long time, as somebody who doesn't really like to drink, is the lack of nightlife options when you don't want to get intoxicated. Like, it seems like unless you want to go to one of the few remaining seedy bars or nightclubs and get wasted, the whole world shuts down at 9pm, even on weekends. I remember a little while ago listening to a podcast interview with Tim McElrath, who is the lead singer of one of my favorite bands, Rise Against. Tim is straight edge, which means he doesn't drink or smoke or do any drugs, and he was talking about how he initially got into music and initially started playing guitar because as a kid who didn't drink and didn't party, he didn't really have anything else to do with his time, and he was bored. So learning to play music and jamming with his friends was a fun way to fill the time. And he talked about how he wonders if at 14 years old, somebody had put a smartphone in his hands, if he ever would have picked up a musical instrument to begin with. If he was bored and he had had the ability to just open up Instagram and waste a few hours, would he have ever started a band? It's crazy to think about how something as simple as a social media app could have completely changed the trajectory of his life, not to mention the millions of people that his music has touched over the years. And it just blew my mind to hear it articulated that way. I think that so much creativity and passion and connection blooms from boredom and from a lack of other options. How many amazing musicians and actors and filmmakers and photographers and chefs got their start doing what they do simply because they didn't have anything else to do? How much creative energy and time is robbed from us all just mindlessly doom scrolling on social media? I believe that everything in life is cyclical. We've seen this with music and fashion and design trends that have fallen out of fashion only to make a resurgence a few years later, which is why I'm holding on to my black skinny jeans with a death grip or more specifically, they're holding me in a death grip. But I do believe that things will go too far, like way further than they already have gone, which is actually really scary to think about. But I think that it's a prime example of trust the process. While everyone is talking about AI and crypto and the metaverse and all this other shit that I don't really understand and don't really care to understand, and while everybody jumps from one social media platform to the next or one dating app to the next or one streaming service to the next as though there's some notable difference between them all, I maintain hope that we will come full circle. We will hit a breaking point at some point, a metaphorical brick wall of sorts that brings with it a new wave of third places, of independent coffee shops and tapas bars and record stores, places that exist equally for the product they sell and the community they foster. But first, we're gonna find ourselves with less things to do, less places to go, feeling more isolated than we ever thought was possible before this bell curve starts to even out. And we're also gonna have to see a lot more high-rise mom jeans before black skinny emo pants come back into fashion. But personally, I'm holding on to hope. But as always, this is just my opinion, just the world according to Nicole, and I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you have a third place? Or maybe did you used to have a third place that no longer exists? Or what are your thoughts on this topic as a whole? Let me know in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video at all, please go ahead and hit that like button. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't done so yet. You can follow me on Instagram at according underscore two underscore Nicole. Other than that, thank you guys so much as always for watching. Take care and I'll see you next week.